All right, welcome back to PyCSC. Today I want to talk about mixed integer linear programming in SciPy. This is a new feature that's been added in SciPy 1.9.0 uh, and later. And it's been um, one of the features missing in the optimization toolkit in SciPy for a while, so I'm really excited to see it's here. So the idea in mixed integer programming is that we have an optimization problem that involves decision variables that are integers and, uh, and maybe continuous variables. And so to, to walk through how this kind of problem arises, uh, I took this example, I adapted it from uh, an example in MATLAB that has um, a goal of making 25 tons of steel that contains 5% carbon and 5% molybdenum, and we want the, the lowest cost way of doing that. Now, what we have as feedstocks are ingots that are shown uh, over here, and you, there's only one of each kind of, of ingot available, and these uh, 5 slash 3, that's 5% carbon, 3% molybdenum and uh, down here 3% carbon, 4% molybdenum. So you can see um, there's a variety of costs and they have different uh, weights uh, over here. And then we can also buy alloys. So uh, the ingots are, are discrete. There's, you either buy an ingot or you don't. So that's an integer decision like zero or one. Then we have alloys, these are continuous. You can buy these in fractional tons and they have different amounts of, of carbon and molybdenum and cost and then there's scrap um, which is the cheapest and we need to combine uh, all of these together by exactly the right amount of each kind that will give us 25 tons of steel that has exactly 5% carbon and 5% molybdenum and we want the lowest cost so you see we have integer variables in the ingots and we have uh, continuous variables in the alloys so let's go ahead and spend a little bit of time before we jump into uh, into code to figure out how we're going to set this uh, this problem up. So the first thing is we're going to work out what is the total cost. So the cost is, is going to be related to uh, these variables. So let's set some variables x0, x1, x2, and x3. And these are going to be 0 or 1. Uh, for whether we use uh, an ingot. And then we'll have x4, x5, x6, and x7, and these are continuous. And this will be the amount of alloy that we buy. All right, so we have eight variables uh, to consider here. Um, this will be, you know, alloy one, two, three, and this will be the amount of scrap. All right, so for the cost, we're going to have uh, x0, 1, 2, or 3 times the weight times uh, or times the cost, if you want. Uh, in the setup, these are in um, dollars per ton. So what we'll end up having is that the cost is simply something like the variable x times the variable c, where this is the cost and this is um, the weights. And over here, if the weight, if, if one of these x's is zero, then it won't count, and if it's one, it will be uh, one times, uh, times that weight. So I'm being a little bit cavalier here, but this is what we want to minimize. All right, now the um, next thing we want is, is the constraints, and we have three constraints. One, the total weight has to be 25 tons. And that's going to look um, like we just take um, the weights of each ingot and uh, the amount of each alloy and add them up. Uh, and so that's going to be like a sum of, of weights. And then the second is percent carbon is equal to 5%. And the third is percent molybdenum is equal to 5%. And the easiest way to do this is, is actually to uh, calculate the amount of carbon from each, uh, from each component.
add that up and uh, in terms of tons and then make sure that's equal to 0 0.05 times 25 which is the total there and similarly but for molybdenum we do that down here is equal to 0 0.05 times 25 all right so that's the goal here we want to minimize this total cost and uh, make sure that we have these constraints that when we add up all of the weights then we get um, 25 and when we add up all the carbon it is equal to 0.05 times 25 and add up all the molybdenum and we get uh, the same thing for that so that's what the new mixed integer linear program does these are all linear uh, you can see here we just have uh, x's, there's no x squareds uh, or nonlinear terms in x. The costs here are all constant, and we have constraints over here. And what remains now is to turn this uh, handwriting into, uh, into code. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over now to JupyterLab and have a look at how, how that's done. So with JupyterLab, we, um, I just have the, the same picture that, that we just looked at um, here. And down uh, here are, are kind of tables of that information that we're going to use. So again, we have one ingot of each type, one, two, three, and four. They have these weights in tons, five tons, three tons, four tons, six tons. These are the percents carbon and molybdenum, and this is the cost per ton for each of those. And then we have three alloys at various costs, and then we have scrap. So the, the first thing we do in setting this up is import all of the things that we're going to need. We're going to use NumPy for arrays, and then we import scipy.optimize. So we import MILP, linear constraint, and bounds. Okay, so what do we do next? First thing we'll do is uh, create an array for the uh, for the costs, and this I'm going to call C, and it's going to look like this. So we have um, for ing the ingots we have the weight times the cost per ton. So this was five, three, four, six, and that comes from this column here, which is the weight of each ingot in tons times the cost per ton, and then these are the cost per ton for the alloys. Now we'll go ahead and define uh, the uh, something called the the integrality um, here, and that's because we're thinking about this. We're going to uh, define the first four to be integers, and so I'll come back to why this is defined as one. Um, but this is a feature in MILP that we'll come to in a little bit. But the first four variables here will be integers, and the last four will be continuous. All right. So we'll go ahead and run that. And now we have to talk about the constraints. So the way we write constraints is um, we need a matrix A times a vector X, and that is going to have uh, upper and lower bounds. And in this case, we have equality constraints. That is, we want the total weight to be equal to a number, not less than or equal or greater than or equal. So the first constraint we are going to look at is the total weight. And I'm going to build this uh, A matrix up and, uh, and then construct it in the, at the end. So we're going to write the first row. And this is going to be a, um, a, an expression that says the weights times the variables is equal to 25. So we have uh, for the, we have for the, uh, eight feedstocks the following uh, the following weights. So ingot one is five tons, ingot two is three tons, ingot three is four tons, ingot four is six tons, and then we just have uh, one, a multiplier of one for each of the alloys because we can buy those in uh, fractional ton increments. And then we're going to define what the, uh, the lower bounds and the upper bounds for this are. And so we're going to make uh, these variables LB0, LU0, and this should equal 25. And this is an expression that says A0 uh, at X equals 25. So A0 is the, the weights of each one, and X is the, um, are the decision variables. So the first four will be zero or one, 
and the last four will be some continuous number that we just multiply by one here. Okay, so that one's uh, sort of sort of obvious, I hope. Now we'll do um, the constraint on carbon. And the way we do this is we, we know what the weight of each uh, component is, and we can uh, look up here and find out what is the percent carbon in each of these. So we take, uh, and this is percent carbon uh, on weight, so 5%. And what we're going to do here is take a, a second um, constraint uh, like this. And so we're going to say 5% times 5, so the first ingot weighs 5, 4% times 3, 0.5% times 4, 0.3% or 0 or 3% times 6. So these are the amounts of carbon in each of the ingots, and this is the amount of carbon in each ton of the other ones. And this is going to equal 0 0.05 times 25. So when we calculate the percent carbon times each of these uh, masses in tons, that gives us tons of carbon. And the tons of carbon on the left equals the tons of carbon on the right. And so these uh, 5, 4, 5, and 3 are coming from this column here in the percent carbon. All right, and now we do the same thing for the constraints on molybdenum. And it just has different, uh, different fractions. So now we get uh, 3, 3, 4, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9. And those are coming from here, 6, 7, 8, 9, 3, 3, 4, 4. And again, we have on the left-hand side, this is the tons of molybdenum. And on the right-hand side, we have uh, 0.05 times 25. And we're using the lower bound and upper bound as the same number uh, to indicate this is an equality constraint. OK, finally, we're going to put these together in the required form, which is AX equals um, a times x is is within uh, some bounds. And so I combine these now finally like this. So we have an array with a0, a1, and a2, and then the corresponding uh, lower bounds for each one and the corresponding upper bounds for each one. And that's how we define these constraints. Now, you could put these all together, but I find writing them out longhand like this um, a little easier to follow. All right, so we run that. And finally, we're ready to put it all together. So here's where we need uh, to look at the MILP. Um, so let's look at this. MILP takes the C matrix, uh, or C vector, and we need to define the integrality. That's the uh, ones and zeros that I defined above. We need to define some bounds. We haven't talked about that yet, uh, but I will in a moment. And, and then we put in the constraints. Uh, and then it solves them uh, in this uh, in this form, and so that's what we're going to look at here. So we uh, first we add c, and then I'm going to say integrality equals integrality. Actually, let's let's scroll down here. It it says what the integrality uh, means. Zero means a continuous variable. One means an integer variable. Uh, that is, the decision variable must be an integer within bounds. And there's a couple of other options in here too. By default, you get continuous variables, um, and we have to specify that uh, which ones are actually integers. The bounds is a scipy.optimized bounds class, and these are bounds on the decision variables. So we're going to specify that the integers can be 0 or 1, because there's only one uh, ingot available. You, ca you can't buy two of some kind, for example. Um, and then the uh, floats can be anything from zero to infinity. And then we specify the constraints. That has to be a scipy.optimized linear constraint object. And so that's where we will um, take the A, LB, and LU arrays that we created above and turn those into um, a constraint. OK, so let's go back up to here. So we define the integrality. Now we're going to uh, create the bounds argument, and that's going to be, um, we're going to say 0 as the lower bound. And then the upper bound is 1 
um, and this is an upper bound that is inclusive so the variable can be uh, less than or equal to one and then uh, we define uh, the float variables as having an infinite upper bound that's not physically practical but uh, mathematically it is is correct and then we add constraints and that is going to be a linear constraint um, and we put in the a lb and lu um, arrays there all right and that uh, should be it we should be able to run this and it runs lightning fast um, and it tells us that the minimum cost we can make 25 tons of the steel for is $84.95. Uh, here we can see we, we succeeded. And down here is the solution. So this tells us that we need to buy the ingots 1, 2, and 4. We do not buy ingot 3. And we buy 7.25 tons of alloy 1, none of alloy 2, quarter ton of alloy three and three and a half tons of scrap and that will give us the uh, 25 tons of steel and it will have exactly the right composition so that's pretty amazing um, this is a like I said a, a missing um, a, it fills a missing gap in the optimization toolkit probably it'll be another year or so uh, before there's a mixed integer nonlinear program capability, but this is a, a big step forward in making the NumPy SciPy stack cover the vast majority of, of our engineering computation needs. All right, that's it. Uh, you can learn more about this in the optimization book and that you can find in the uh, video description at Point Breeze Publishing. And if you like this, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.